Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for day three of Provine. I'm starting off with an interview. I'm at Domaine Vacal, yes? Yes, right. yes. I'm with Heinz. I'll let him pronounce his last name. Um, he's the winemaker here. And uh, Heinz, go ahead and introduce yourself and we'll get started. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you. Uh, my name is Heinz Frischengruber. I'm the winemaker of Domaine Vacal. Uh, we are situated between Linz and Vienna okay. and directly on the Danube. It's a very small valley, a beautiful UNESCO World Heritage site. And we have all our vineyards over the valley, um, very steep terraced, um, very old vineyards. And we're focused on Grüne Wittliner mm -hmm. and Riesling and on single vineyards. Okay. So we're doing over 25 different single vineyards and from the philosophy, from the climate, from the terroir. We're doing very straight, elegant wines, very puristic style, which is still drink friendly. And it doesn't matter what alcohol you have inside, you're always thirsty for your second bottle. Nice. So uh, I, I visited, this is actually the first hall I visited uh, two days ago, and we tasted a little bit, and I asked if it was Tuesday would be good. I said I'd be here at 9 o'clock, and I got here at 9.20. So I'll have a newbie's guide to Provine after all the Provine stuff to kind of tell people what to do if you're in the press, and yeah. if you're not in the press, too. Anyway, so um, how long has the uh, winery been around? So it's like how, how, how many years has the winery been? Uh, the, the winery goes back to the late Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. uh, we were owned in former times for the church, and so we have very historical places. We have a historical Keller Schlössel, for example, and then a cellar. Everything is underground, and which was built 300 years ago. Okay. So very, very great, very historical, but also a very modern part. So we finished last autumn, last harvest, okay. a big project uh, yeah, to, to work in the best gentle way but but so I will say that the winemaking stuff is the, the easy thing uh -huh. that you can really handle so we're working less in the cellar but the focus is on the vineyards okay uh, we, 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 we working insect seed for insecticide free we're working with our herbicides we're working uh, with our own seed mixtures to get much more vitalization much more diversity in the in the in, in the soil uh, to get really structured wines with a lot of minerality and for what we are also famous are uh, for the big potential for the aging potential aging potential which is very yeah. very very fantastic yeah um, so basically you should focus on the vineyards taking care of the taking care of the the grapes and the soil and everything yeah. and, and let them speak for themselves instead of trying to do it all in the winery because we have a lot of very small parcels you know and we actually we plant uh, vineyards from 200 meter sea level, it's at the sea level of the Danube, and we're going up to 500 sea, uh, meters altitude. And so the Wachau by itself is just 15 kilometers long, so a very short valley, uh, but a lot of different parcels, different tastes of the single vineyard. So we're driven by the primary rock, actually by the by the nice, and then some fantastic vineyards still have bit higher percentage of amphibolites, uh, which gives you even more flintiness, smokiness in the character. Sometimes, sometimes you have so a kind of a, a layer from the stones over the fruit and then you can drink through. And this is so fantastic because the, the character, the terroir feeling in the wines are so fantastic. Yeah. And I think one of the greatest examples is single vineyard Akleiten. Okay. Uh, actually, it's for me the... I'm born in the Wachau, so yeah. actually that's the, 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 but I'm sure that's the greatest single vineyard we have over Auswell, not just over the Wachau, okay. but over Auswell, it's really nice. fantastic. Very nice. Maybe so, we, 
have a we have a barrel sample here. Um, barrel sample 2018. It's still right. on the lease. Right. But it's now reasoning. So Grüner Vitlina is very typical for us, a very spicy variety of Riesling. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, it's, you know, better. And then I'm really big Riesling freak. Yeah. And also kind of an acidity freak. Yeah. So yeah. I like the, I like the, the crispiness, the vibration and the finish. Yeah. That's, yeah. And then Riesling can do it really well. Right. So while he's pouring this, um, so here at Provine, a lot of uh, people are bringing effectively barrel samples because it's so early into 2019 that most wines aren't ready to be barreled yet. Though I know some play, some people are going to start bar uh, go to bottle. They're still in barrel or they're still in tank. They're still settling. Um, and I know of some people that are going to start bottling in next week. Uh, so they just it was just a week too, a couple weeks too early for them to like to have a finished bottle but uh, so the thing about these barrel samples or these or these tank samples is that um, they're not quite finished yet but because everyone here is basically a professional um, it's okay you know you're tasting kind of on the potential it's like they'll make like an on premiere type of thing like with Bordeaux you know and that's the point you know yeah. 2017 is still on the market the people yeah. know it is and we want to show the new vintage and 18 was a great fantastic vintage not easy, not yeah. easy, quite, quite, quite warm, quite dry, uh, but but we handled it. And then in the first wine we bottled have this grip, have this drink friendliness, um, have this elegance. So I'm quite satisfied. Uh, this is now a smaragd. Okay. So smaragd is a style. In the Wachau, this is so the, the top class. Right there, right? Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's sort of the top class top that class, we yeah. have, and and this we will. This is still unfiltered, and we will bring it in September okay. on the market. So we just leave it for aging uh, in in the, in the big casks. Right. Um, yeah, can you kind of go over the, the three levels uh, quality real quick? Uh, the point is the Wachau uh, has its own rules, maybe the strongest rules in the world, uh, because we have the steep terraced vineyards. It's not like in the Mosul, we have the terraced vineyards. So we have to do everything by hand. We right. cannot work with the tractors. And so we have 1,000, 1,500 hours per hectare uh, to work. And so we have to save us by ourselves. To, 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 to tell this the people who love our wines um, and so we found it 35 years ago the Vineyard Wachau okay. uh, and you're just allowed to be a member when you have just vineyards in the Wachau that's very important because we don't like investors in the region just to yeah. be a bit safe you know for the future to take care that uh, the next generation have also fun in the vineyards in their own vineyards right and they should not work for somebody else uh, and to make it even a bit more clear we had a, always a light a medium bodied and and a powerful wine right and these are the three categories right styles the first one is the Steinfeder very easy drinking very light refreshing it's more for the original market 11.5 alcohol really light descent I always call it car driver wine okay because it's so light and it depends right yeah, yeah. sorry it's all right <laughs> yeah and and the next step is the Federspiel uh -huh. it's the most important wine style um, because it fits to every dinner to every lunch you can drink it by itself or with some food uh, really really fantastic so medium bodied uh -huh. and the top stuff is like this smorak always in combination of course with the best in the vineyard um, the point is behind this smorak um, we have a very long hanging time in the wine so the, the big um, advantage in the in the cooler hemisphere especially in Wachau is the coolest region in Austria um, to harvest this late to get more nitrogen uh, to get more minerals inside to get more extract and so you have this long aging potential and so we are harvesting quite late and yeah it's more con concentrated more complex it's not so much you have not so much fruitiness in the nose because we go more into the soil okay into the microclimate and yeah this is smrag i think it's in these days well known for the top wines of austria but it's just from a really really small region mm -hmm. yeah that's the point all right maybe we want to try it yeah absolutely so refreshing after the first coffee in the morning <laughs> right 
and and Agleiten. Riesling is always fantastic. I think you can 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 smell it, this flintiness. You you can smell these different layers. Yeah. The chest of of, of some some some. <laughs> Bleistiftmine, we call it in Germany. It's elegant, it's great structure, but it's very long, but not too full. But you know, it's right. really long, uh, but not not too broad. Right. Yeah. A lot of elegance, fantastic acidity, and it's still in, in, a, in a hot year in 2018. Right. What we're not used to in these days. So we had also to learn a bit further. Right. But. But we, you know, we prepare in these days of vineyards, actually in the beginning of the winter time for the colder years, uh, for the warmer, for the hot years. Right. 30 years ago, we did it different, you know. Right. Now we're changing, now we're working very flexible. And right. yeah, that's the point. Some exotic fruits, lovely peaches on the ballad, apricots of course, but it's more a bit more on the yellow side of the fruit. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So yesterday um, at the hotel, I had honeydew, but apparently here it's yellow, not green. Where I'm used to, where I'm used to the, the, of the rind being green, and it was yellow and I had pineapple, so um, not that I get pineapple out of this, but I do take yeah, a, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little honeydew and, and um, uh, like I said, the apricot, um, some peach, uh, right, white right. peach and that, that type of stuff. But it's a fantastic thing from the Riesling, Riesling you, 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 you will find everywhere in the world, uh, but Riesling shows you really great the origin where it's grown and, and what we can do the best thing in the world on the Riesling is to make very structured, complex Rieslings dry, completely dry fermented. You know, yeah. it says three gram residual sugar when it stops fermentation. So that's the point uh, for what the, the Wachau stands and still elegant, not to overload it. Right. Not too yeah. Body. And I mean, you know, it's it's still young. You know, the acid's really high. Um, and that's gonna that's gonna help it age, uh, yeah. age beautifully. I mean, this thing's gonna go probably 20 years and yeah, no we, problem. We, yeah. We have a stock back to the 40s. Mm -hmm. So fantastic stuff when you like this, and then yeah, you you get this. Yeah. It's elegance, the finish in the wines. Yeah. And with with uh, a lot of the reasons I've tasted over the past few days, uh, in tasting. You know, 18s and then tasting things that are 10 or years or older. I mean, it's you, you have really two kind of you have two different wines. I mean, you can drink them young and, and enjoy them that way, but if you let them age, even just a few years, they, they develop so much more complexity and more body and just richness to it. Uh, and, and wines in general will do that, but Riesling just especially has that such aging potential because of all the acid it's got. I mean, it's just it's. It's pretty amazing that it. But you need the does. right, the right thing to It's just very important. And you yeah, had. You can't, you can't just like have any like riesling, but yeah. And then you need this, this, this very poor sandy stony soils. Mm -hmm. That's the point. You do fat soils. It's not 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 great for riesling. Yeah. So you had to suffer a little bit to bring out the full complexity. Right. And and you had. Yesterday, that um, um, light ninety six. Yes. Yeah. And, and that was think you like it. spectacular, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been a treat because I've had had like things like the ninety six, and I've had other things from the nineties, uh, rieslings, and uh, just other wines in general. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a pretty awesome experience uh, to be hanging out here at Provine in general, and uh, being able to taste the wines uh, the other day yeah. here was was really really special for me. So. Fast, it's good. I'm gonna finish that one. Um, <laughs> it's only the first wine of the day, you yeah. know. I, I got time to sober up from a half ounce of wine. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, the wine's beautiful. Um, it's as good as it was the other day, you know. It's, um, but uh, yeah, the, these wines are incredible wines. Um, if you ever get a chance to, I mean, I know for the general public, Provine's not something. 
game that they can go to that's got to be trade. Um, but, you know, if you ever have the opportunity to try uh, these wines, um, please do. Um, they're they're uh, kind of an iconic winery. I mean, yeah. they are. Uh, and that's why I wanted to come by and, and, and taste them and then wanted to sit down with you. Um, of course, no problem. Yeah. Best way is to enjoy it in the Bajo Valley by itself. Absolutely, right? <laughs> in the it's, it's crazy. Oh, and the Danube, and the Danube yeah. on the boat is more relaxing. On you the know? boat, right, It's yeah. easier, you don't have to walk and just drink and, and watch the, the single vignettes. Yeah, they have, <laughs> I mean, this this area of the world between you know, here and Germany, between Germany and Austria, um, they've got all these like boat tours. I mean, they've got these, they look pretty cool. And I actually know someone that takes these boat tours fairly <laughs> frequently. Um, he's also done it in France. Um, so, I mean, totally relaxing from what I understand. Um, you, it's it's a cruise, just on a river, instead of yeah, on the ocean. You know, you, st you, you, uh, you cruise up during the day, you stop at night in, in a city or a town, you have dinner, maybe off, maybe on the boat, maybe not, go shop or whatever. Um, very, very great way to see the country. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so, is there anything else you'd like to talk about with the wine the winery? Yeah, you have to visit us and you have to see and yeah. and, 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 and get a feeling because you can taste the wine, but, but we have so much history, so much culture yeah. behind the winery, behind um, the Wachau Valley, behind mm -hmm. the single vineyards. So fantastic. And, and I just the best way is to learn it go once up in the single vineyards yeah. you climb up you will be really sweaty and then you get the respect and you never won't forget this it's, this is so amazing um, to smell the stones in the vineyards um, that's the best way uh, to, to to see to enjoy the, I, the, the, the wines the Wachau Valley yeah. and yeah, of course the wines mm -hmm. later on in the evening yeah I totally the restaurant. agree I mean that's you know what what I do with this podcast yeah. um, when I do interviews I mean, I'm usually visiting the areas and you, you are absolutely right the best way to experience it is to go to the winery go see the vineyards go walk to the vineyards um, get the feeling and, yeah get I mean feeling. and then also immerse yourself in the culture you know eat the food yeah, you yeah. know really just experience everything there is in that in that area yeah um, great think, free culture yeah great especially food. I think like in, in Europe um, you know trying to you know really get do what the locals do as much as you can and most yeah. most wine areas are not in big cities so you're not getting to, I mean there's it can be touristy in certain wine areas I know that especially like summertime is weather's nice and people yeah. like to go out but I mean you really can experience some awesome culture uh, of, of, course, of, course, of course that's what I've already experienced here in, in, in Germany when I visited the wineries there so Austria's you know on the list everywhere's on the yeah, list yeah but, yeah you know, <laughs> this would be an amazing place to see, and they're always they're always beautiful, beautiful yeah. areas. Yeah, Wine so. is growing everywhere. It's beautiful. So exactly. That's a big that's a big, <laughs> big, big point. <laughs> exactly. Well, folks, we're gonna go and wrap this up. Uh, I know he's got stuff to do, um, and I got stuff to do. So um, uh, stay tuned for more stuff from Provine. Usually, I do like a sign off, but um, I'm just that I have more segments to do. So yeah. you're gonna see me hitting the the, the last three halls. Um, as best I can and try to do a few things. I'm also going to do some tastings uh, some other uh, other uh, people uh, that I haven't been able to go to yet. So I uh, look forward to the rest of the day. And uh, Heinz, again, thank you so much for thank you with me. I really thank appreciate you taking time. Lines. All right. Good Heinz, so stay tuned. we got some more stuff coming up. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right. So the next two clips you're going to see um, – uh, it's just me taking video. I don't really, there's no commentary to it, but you will hear just the ambient noise going on. Uh, the first clip, uh, I got went to the top. There's like some stairs that went to like kind of a skywalk in essence. Uh, but it was in Hall 17, which is the last of the halls. And this kind of thing connects you to basically where Halls 7, 8, and six and all that, you know, it, it kind of crosses the, the, the property. Um, so yeah, hall 17, just want to show you what, what, what the whole hall 17 looks like. It's I actually, I don't think it's the biggest hall. I think it's like maybe the third of biggest hall. I'd have to look at, Oh, you know what? I actually have a map from my credentials. Um, yeah. Hall 17 actually is, isn't, isn't very large. Um, 
dude, where was Hall 8 on this map? Oh, over there. I uh, never went to Hall 8. Anyway, um, 17 is... You can see it. Let's see if it focuses. 17 is right there, and it's not really getting good focus. 16 and 15 were humongous. And even 14, 14 and 13 are, are, this, are this red that they're like connected. Um, and then basically as you go lower, the, the halls get kind of smaller. The 11, 11 was pretty big. 10 was pretty big. Uh, but 16 was the biggest of all the halls. Um, and then hall 18 is actually the food court uh, in the middle, which is basically a tent. But um, which is where I, we saw I had lunch. Or you will see. I'm not sure where, where it is in the episodes. Uh, anyway, so uh, so top top of hall 17. And then there's the uh, then there's the cross thing that gets you, um, which is this thing right here. I never even noticed on the map what it is. That's this thing. So you kind of walk out of 17 in the hallway, and you basically it's the people move there, like being in an airport, and it gets you to you know where seven is, and then if you kept going hall eight, which they didn't use, and then hall nine and all that. Uh, hall seven, which uh, in the clip that I said I was in hall 17, I was really in hall seven. Um, but I had seen Hall 17 assigned for it, and then it distracted me. That was uh, mainly uh, spirits. That was the um, that was the same but different area, and um, I kind of explained what I did there. Um, and yeah, so enjoy those two little little things to see the enormity of the trade fair. Alright, so I've made it to Hall 17. This is the same but different thing that's the theme for it. I can't remember. Um, if I remember to do it, I'll put the lower third what it is. But lots of like spirit stuff. And I was told to check out this one place. And I gotta look up. Come back to me. There you go. Um, I gotta check out where it is. I think I'm actually almost there. Um, so the dinner I had last night with uh, Pasqua, I met uh, a lady there and she told me to stop by one of the booths here to check out some cool stuff. So um, I'm going to go try to find that, give you a look, a, a sense of what this hall actually looks like. So definitely a different look, you see a lot of like wood, because it's basically all spirits. So. Really kind of cool looking. What I like about Provine is that you've got all these different types of looks here. All these, each country or each hall has almost like a different theme to it. Really, really neat. All right, let's see if I can find that, uh, that place I need to go to. I think I found it. So the, I found where I was supposed to go, but he's, he's in a meeting with somebody. He's the only one there, so I'll try to swing back later. But um, does this look familiar? Welcome home. So I'm in Hall 8, and uh, definitely, uh, yeah, we, we're back we're back to the United States here. Um, I don't really have any, um, any exact wineries I'm going to hit, but I'm probably going to stop by 
here and there to like check some stuff out. Uh, maybe go see my buddy or the South African thing here. That's over here. Maybe I'll see him again. Anyway, um, yeah, kind of check out the hall a little bit. All right, I'm finishing up in Hall 9. Uh, I just want you to take a look at what the other side of the hall looks like. We've got all kinds of cool uh, wine areas, like Chinese wine. Like, I've had some Chinese wine. It was okay. I may come back and try some of that. Um, and we got all kinds of stuff. I saw my, my buddy, um, Jim. Yeah, Jim is his name. Uh, he represents South African wines. But what's really cool, and I'll come back to me, is that I stopped by Tokara. So if you've been a long time viewer of the show, you'll know that I reviewed some Takara wine, uh, but uh, one of my Twitter followers sent me some of those wines because he was like, you should try it because it'll change your mind about South African wine. And um, they were great wines. I actually went and tried them again. And um, I'm trying to tell you which episode it was. It was episode 302. And uh, it was, I did it out, I did it on, uh, it came out June 16th, 2014. So not quite five years, but three and a half years ago. So um, my buddy, uh, my Twitter buddy, I'm gonna send him, send him pictures of, of the wines I had and uh, say hi to him. But uh, I'm about to go into uh, Hall 10. Yeah, Hall 10. And I'm trying to remember if I have anything in here to do. Uh, no, nothing in Hall 10. I'm just gonna kind of walk around Hall 10, just kind of try to find something to eat because I have a kind of an appointment in about an hour. So, um, Maybe there'll be some cool Spanish food here. I don't know. So here's, uh, here's what the hall looks like. Definitely a really good integration of the, uh, the, of their, the flag, uh, the colors of the flag, uh, to theme it out. Um, there's going to be some incredible wines here, but I'm probably just going to get some to eat right now. And then... Um, hit my kind of appointments and then then swing back through here uh, in a little bit to uh, do some tasting because I'm running a little bit behind. I stopped at California. I know it seems kind of silly, but I had to try some wines that I heard of and I hadn't had a chance to try. Plus, come back to me. <clears throat> Plus, you know what? I really like duck horn. I mean, I like everything they do. Um, I don't necessarily sing praises of any specific wineries, um, but there's definitely wineries that are, uh, I really like what they do, um, and Duckhorn's one of them, so just so you know. But I tried a little selection of their stuff, and I mean, I've had all of it before. I, the only thing I tried that I'd never had before was the um, Zinfandel from D Decoy. So if you're looking for good value uh, wine, uh, line and by value I mean it's still in that fifteen to twenty dollar range. It's not a ten dollar wine, but uh, decoy anything they make is going to be good. So uh, yeah, just so many cool stuff here in Spain to try. I'll have to come back here in a little bit to try it. All right, on to lunch. All right, lunch time. I'm in the food court, um, and I'm on a little heavy on lunch here. Um, so I got what they're calling a Tex-Mex dog, basically a chili cheese dog, and then another one they call the New York dog. It's got uh, sauerkraut, onions. They also had an American dog, which had relish. Um, I told them they were missing the Chicago dog. They don't think they knew what they were saying, but I asked them, there was like this word, I didn't know what it was. And as soon as, as soon as they tell me what it was, I heard the guy say it in Spanish. Basically, it's the German word for onion. Um, and I heard him say a cebolla. I'm like, well, I know that word. Anyway, I'm also going to try it. I also got this thing called Africola. There you go, Africola. Um, they want to know if I wanted the heavy or the light or the regular light. I said, give me the heavy. I'll walk off the, I'll walk off the calories. So it's tasty. Um, a little bit different than Coke. You know, that's kind of the standard, I guess. Only really tasty. 
Um, I'm going to take a bite real quick of these, of these two hot dogs. Yeah, I know. I'm in Germany meeting hot dogs. Or American, American style hot dogs, right? Anyway. You know what I'm excited about? I'm actually eating mustard finally in Germany. Yeah, I know, you know, don't lick your hands. It's tasty. I like it. I know, nothing more boring than watching somebody eat, right? All right, so real quick, take a bite of the Tex-Mex dog with the chili and the cheese. Let's see if it's... Looks like it's got beans in it. I'm not a fan of beans with my chili. It's good. It's good. I need to get more napkins. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to show you what the food hall looks like, at least from where I'm sitting. I don't remember if I did that two days ago or two episodes ago. So pick this up. I, I, I sit here specific, specifically so I don't have anyone in the background, but let's take a look at the hall real quick. So, so there's a hot dog stand and got lots of seating. There's a couple other little food thing areas. There's a big wall there so you can't really see what's over there. It's cool. It's right in the, kind of in the middle of everything and um, easy to get to. I didn't see anything in the Spain hall to, uh, to eat really quickly and I knew I had to come over here anyway or, or in this area so I just it was easy to get over here. All right so onward to um, the last hall, the last couple halls and then um, I'll swing back probably to 10, 9, and 8, and 7. Bonjour France. So I'm in hall 11. Uh, so got a lot of friends here and I'll head to hall 12 here in a little bit to do some tasting or try to do some tasting and maybe get a little interview action. Um, but I see right there Vuvan Ball. I visited them in Burgundy in 17. So I'm going to go hang out over there for a minute. Let's see if they'll, uh, let's see if they'll uh, do a tasting with me real quick. Okay, you know how I always talk about I have a charm life and, you know, things just, ha good things happen for me with this whole wine thing? So, you now have to watch my 10th anniversary show because I just scored an interview with Bruno Payard and that's going to be the centerpiece. Not yeah, centerpiece, but it's going to be one of the three segments because we're going to be featuring his wine at my live audience 10th anniversary show. Uh, that's going to be recorded on May 20th and released on May 27th, which is the day before the 10th anniversary of the show. If you're in San Antonio, keep a lookout on Facebook if you're my friend. There's only 24 slots, actually 23, because Dad gets a slot. Um, and then maybe only 21 slots, because I, might, I may have some special guests that I have to make sure they're, they're able to get a seat. But there's only about 20 slots, and it may go fast. Pricing will be determined a little bit later once I get the prices on the wines and how much we have got to, you know, revenue I got to generate to pay for everything. But um, uh, Monsieur Payard was so kind to sit down with me. I think it was almost a 20 minute interview. So um, to feature his Premier Cuvée, uh, I tasted some of his other wines. I'm going to go back there in a little bit to taste some more wines, but I kind of promised somebody else I was going to stop by, taste one of their new wines. Uh, that got released last night, and I saw I gotta go see other people, so, um, but I'm hanging out in Champagne, so it doesn't suck. Anyway, that's it for the next segment. All right, we're starting to get to the end of all this for me. Uh, I just had a wonderful tasting with, uh, let's see, did I already record video about Fiat? I don't know, now I'm starting to forget what I recorded. So, um, I had two incredible tastings, let's we'll just put it that way. And if I repeated myself, I repeat myself. So I went to uh, Nicholas Fiat. Um, they're a very large uh, uh, champagne house, um, but they make some really, really good stuff. Uh, I tried a new release, and um, wow, I'm one of the first people to try it. Um, 
I mean, I don't know how many people tried it here at Vinex. I mean, Vin you can tell I'm already, I'm already thinking about other things like Vin Expo and Vin Italy because I was talking about it with another gentleman. Provine, there we go. Um, but they released it yesterday at an event and I got to go taste it today. It's a bunch of Premier Cruise. I think I did talk about this. So anyway, uh, then I just went to um, Bessara. So a uh, buddy of mine said to go stop by and they were gracious enough to sit down with me and we tasted a few of their wines. Uh, which, you know, I have pictures of all of that. And uh, now I'm in Hall 10. Whoa. Follow me. No. There you go. I get it. Um, so, I'm in Hall 10. I need to go to... I, I don't know the name of the cruise. I just have their... their uh, what, who they are. Um, I was going to stop by somewhere else, but they just seemed kind of busy and... I don't know if I would have been able to see the the person. I mean, there was like a specific person I was going to try to go see, but I don't know if he would have been able to see me. He may not even been there. Um, so where am I at? 10 C 22. So I got to find C. We're almost there. So uh, they had some port yesterday, so maybe they'll have that again. We'll see what's going on with it. Anyway, on to the next place. All right, folks. Yet again in the studio. Uh, ending the show for this week. Thank you so much for uh, watching these episodes and, of course, watching just in general. Um, I want to thank Provine for letting me uh, come in and cover the cover it for um, my, my show. Granted, you know, it's a month later that I'm finally, actually over a month later, I'm finally putting out the um, the episodes. But, you know, I had all those other interviews to do ahead of time. But, you know, I did a ton of Instagram coverage and Facebook coverage while I was there. Uh, so thank you very much, Provine, for um, letting me do some video coverage. Also, thank you to all of the producers, the winemakers, the people who work for the wineries, who, you know, whoever they were, uh, all three days for seeing me in, in essence, without appointments a lot of times. Um, you know, there are too many people to thank. Um, you know, besides like, you know, some of the German tastings I had, which were all amazing, of course. Um, you know, uh, and I didn't even, I don't even think I mentioned the videos because I probably thought I recorded one. You know, as I said last week during one of these little like recap things that there were times I took video and I thought I took video and I didn't. Um, you know, I went to, there was like a natural wine thing. And, uh, there was a guy from, from, uh, Sicily there. No, as far as Sardinia. No, wait a minute. Sicily. Yeah. It was Nero Davila. Um, and I tasted like his entire line of wines. It was just the two of us and they were amazing wines and they were ripping my face off. Um, but amazing wines, you know, and I mean, you know, he could have just said, ah, oh, man, you, I don't need to talk to you. But yeah, I mean, they were, everyone was so nice and they gave me some time, especially, especially the people I got the actual little like interviews with, but even the people like the Hepplers, you know, on day one, the Austrian uh, winery that I mentioned kind of briefly in day one, you know, they sat, they sat down with me for like half an hour. It's like my first, it was like one of my first places I went to. So it was really slow and I felt bad. I should have set up a video for that, you know, and then, uh, of course, Vakal from today's episode, he sat down with me for almost 20 minutes uh, early in the morning and he was very gracious. I was actually about 20 minutes late. I almost didn't go because I was late. Like I was afraid like, oh, if I show up, he's not like night time. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to at least ask. I'd rather ask and be told no than, than not ask. And then he get all mad that I didn't show up because I didn't you know, meet my commitment, especially because I was doing an interview. It was like a little tasting. That's one thing you'll learn. Uh, these trade shows, people make appointments all the time and they, they overbook themselves. Not intentionally, it just, it happens. But yeah, thank you to all the people who sat down with me. Uh, even if it wasn't for an interview, they took their time to go through their wines, um, effectively one-on-one -on -one tastings, you know, everyone from Germany to Switzerland, to South Africa, to Sicily, to the United States, California, Oregon, uh, all, all the the, the, all the French producers, the champagne houses, Nicolas Fouillat, uh, and, um, uh, no, I can't remember the other, I mentioned it in the video, I'll pop it lower third on that one. Uh, I did, um, you know, trying, trying out all these cool things. Uh, shout out to, uh, Charles Butler for setting me up with a couple of these places to, um, to sit down and, uh, do some tastings, uh, and everybody else that was so gracious. Anyway, um, 
that is going to do it for this episode. Uh, of course, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to uh, check out all the wines that I checked out on that day, on today, on day three. Even I didn't, even it wasn't on video. Um, if I went there, if I didn't mention it, you know, I had pictures of it probably, um, so I'll know where I went to. But um, you know, check those out. Hit the donate button if you'd like to. Um, let's see what else. Uh, if you are in town, uh, this is this is next week at this point, uh, May 20th, because this show went out on May 13th. So May 20th, if I have, still have tickets available, please, please, please show up to the 10th anniversary show. It's a live audience. Only about 20-ish people can be there. Um, but if you don't have tickets uh, and there are tickets available, you want to come, it's 35 bucks. Um, you can... Uh, shoot me an email, shoot me a message, however you want to contact me, and I'll send you a link to the invite. And um, yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, that's going to do it for this week, and we'll see everyone again next time.